of owning a cafe and other heroic deeds by Beware the Tristero, Chapter 140 of Unexpected Reunions, Part 1. They'd returned to the Onsen Resort by 1627, and as their friends scampered off to their rooms to get changed, Shota escorted his husband, still in their finery, to the kitchens. Curtain, you have it? Yes, well, I couldn't not, you know. I've been refining the recipes for weeks to make sure they were right for today. I'm surprised you didn't get suspicious since the kids kept yelping and guarding their plates when you came into the cafe. <laughs> so that's why their little faces were always stuffed with cake whenever I went to talk to them, is it? His partner. His husband! Chuckled good-naturedly. You really shouldn't have, though I wanted this to be a proper vacation for you. So says that man who flew in a special officiant, booked an entire resort, and has been sneakily doing hero-related paperwork on his phone when he thinks I haven't been looking. He replied fondly, their hands laid together as they walked down a service corridor to inspect the cake and treats he'd made for them that morning. Oh, sorry, I... You don't have to be sorry. He cut in gently, their eyes meeting, his slater fingers squeezing the sun-kissed ones he held as they nodded politely at the bowing, blushing young servers who just left the industrial kitchen they were about to enter. When I married you, I married all my own too. I love every part of you, and as much as I'd love to just lock you in the cafe and keep y'all to myself in our community, helping people is who you are. It's one of the reasons I fell in love with you in the first place. He chuckled before a smirk tilting his lips. Plus, you give pretty amazing foot rubs, so I think I'll keep you around. Watching the other blush right along with him, they chuckled like stupidly spitten teenagers while Stoshinori pushed the two double doors open for them. But if it isn't Shotadono and Toshinori-sama, you're here to look in on those scrumptious cakes you've made, no doubt. Smiling as they were greeted by the chef de cuisine, the lovers returned the bow he offered them and followed him as he directed, As you can see, we're still preparing our evening meal, and may I pass on my many congratulations on your wedding. You've certainly had a beautiful day for it, haven't you? Chuckling the conversation merrily flowing between them, they were led to the smaller side kitchen he'd been given for his baking, whilst the other cooks continued to broil, fry, chop, and season the delicious scented meats they were making for them. Well, I shall leave you to it, then. Oh, and thank you again, Shota Dono, for the extra treats you've made for the staff. It was incredibly kind of you, and we'll be sure to enjoy them this evening. You're more than welcome. He grinned as, with another bow, the pair of them were left in the fourteen-by-sixteen-foot area, his form wandering to the large refrigerator. Thanks to his husband's appetite, they had one quite similar back at their family's apartment, and as he looked to the man behind him, his heart fluttering a little at the excitement he saw his lover's gaze. The adorable, secretly Labrador quirk man was so easy to please, wasn't he? You ready? Only if you meant what you said about me sneaking a cupcake. Although if my pre banquet snack is you, then... Toshi, this is a kitchen, so we'll be keeping things strictly PG until later. Got it. Uh, no desecrating hallowed ground, understood, sweetheart. Oh my good, I promise. The blonde said in what he supposed was meant to be a serious tone. Those as your eyes glinting mysteriously. Oh, oh, how that gaze thrilled him. You'd better be. He tried to huff, his face flustered as he returned his attention to the large chrome-fronted appliance, his hands pulling the double doors wide open to display the four-tiered cylindrical wedding cake he'd made. Shoot her! Each layer was smoothly coated in pale blue frosting, whilst a selection of flowers held their skelter down from the first tier, ending in a circular flourish at the base. Atop where a black cat and a gold rabbit sat together, their fondant heads curving towards each other above the flow of sugar paste sunflowers, white chocolate roses, actual cornflowers, dahlias, and multicolored hibiscus. Each layer is a different flavor. He stated, his gaze appraising the first wedding cake he'd ever made. The top here is a blend of our favorites, a cinnamon and vanilla sponge, sandwiched with spiced apple compote and double cream laced with caramel. Then we have a hazelnut milk chocolate sponge cake filled with a cherry jam dotted with passion fruit and followed by this third tier, 
a classic lemon dream cake that I've spiked with lime and candied yuzu peel, which would go nicely with our base of carrot and raisin cake. It's a little denser, but I needed something sturdy for the support rods to sit in, you know? I might have overdone it with the spices, too. However, I think the cream cheese frosting I've used to sandwich it will balance everything out. Uh, blinking, his mouth preparing to talk his lover through the various cat and rabbit-themed cupcakes he'd made, Shota found arms wrapped around him. Uh, it's more beautiful than I could have imagined, kitten. You've outdone yourself, truly. His husband breathed reverently before pressing a chase kiss to his temple. Thank you, he murmured. Whatever did I do to deserve you, hmm? Thanking the latest iteration of Kurogiri, Shirogaraki hummed at the onsen. It was a thoughtful choice, to be sure, and as he walked up the smoothly paved driveway, he allowed a smile to spread his lips as the doorman blinked at him, bowed, and looked to his fellow for sense. He allowed a smile to spread his lips as the doorman blinked at him, bowed, and looked to his fellow in his guns. Good evening, sir. They greeted before the woman smiled at him politely and bowed further. We're sorry, but our resort is closed for a private function. Oh, yes, I'm well aware. He replied demurely. I am a surprised guest. He further congenially, his body decked out in his favorite black suit, white shirt, and leather dress shoes, his crimson eyes sparkling pleasantly. I'm certain that my dear son Shoda will be more than pleased to see me on his wedding evening, don't you? Oh, Aizama uh, I'm so sorry, but didn't know, the young man gasped. I mean, we weren't told. That's quite all right. He chuckled amicably. It wouldn't be much a surprise. It wouldn't be much of a surprise if you had now, would it? He added whilst producing a falsified driver's license bearing the eatery owner's family name to assuage any misgivings they might have had. And I'd very much appreciate your continued discretion, too, if that's all right. Of course, sir. The young woman offered whilst the lad pulled open the door for him. Will not say a thing, you have our word. Humming into the cupcake he'd been allowed to steal, Yagi Aizawa Toshinori almost didn't hear his full ringing. Oh, looking at the caller ID, his brows lifting, he looked to his lover. I take it, it's fine. The shorter man laughed, snorted, those dark eyes rolling fondly whilst he shut the fridge, his rabbit cupcake mostly eaten. Why don't you head outside where the reception is better and I'll check on the mini cheesecakes the chefs are making for me, all right? Trying his best to put on a smile that wasn't strange, the number one pro nodded and made his way to the fire door his partner had pointed out, his shoulders stiffening a touch as he stared at Best Genist's number. The Hero Commission had promised not to contact him unless a potentially international crisis was at hand, hadn't they? Shit, of all times... Sighing, his sandaled feet padding onto the concrete paving outside, the mid-afternoon light still strong and glimmering through swaths of shimmering bamboo, he pressed the receive button and put the device to his ear. Genus, what's up? I thought the shit vigor, vig villain of the... Scowling slightly, their country's symbol of peace momentarily pulled away from the fractious static spattered line to check his shield industry's phone signal. It was fine. It was strong, which could only mean there was a problem on the mainland. Shin! Chinist! I could barely hear you. Prince Ch you Anger! Hold on, I have a friend here who should be able to bolster the signal. Shikaraki! Feeling the blood in his veins freeze, Toshinori could see the world around him gray in a slow motion. Tultra defect, Cliss, image, escaped. No. Still, uh, chaos. The, the energy, orb gate. No, no, no. Overrun was free. Tartarus had been breached. Other inmates were potentially on the loose. Shit! You were the jerk. Wait, what? No. No, they were nowhere near Muzutafu. The bastard couldn't know where they were. Could he? Shota! Turning back to the door, his heart in his throat, he almost crushed his phone in the hurry of his panic as he pushed the barrier aside, his instincts just about stopping him from punching through it, or were still hurling into the kitchen where... Uh, Toshinori-san, you don't look well.
Walking leisurely around the resort, he found himself admiring some of the artwork, his echolocation easily picking out the various people milling around. He knew the majority of them by name. Some of their DNA would be useful. Stealing their quirks outright, though, would defeat one of his main reasons for being here. And he couldn't stand for his good work to be undone by the greedy avarice he was trying to stem. Such vices were things that a truly successful leader couldn't indulge in now, weren't they? More's the pity, he hummed to himself, his senses alerting him to several key pieces of information as he avoided the staff, his demeanor calmly pleased. The majority of the wedding party were leaving the largest communal hot spring, alongside a few others emerging from what he assumed to be the spa. The children were pulled together in one of the large suites, their forms lounging, playing, and chasing each other around in the rambunctious ways that only children could. He had been wrong, he now knew, to overlook such basic pleasures in life, to disregard life, as he had. But there'd be time to correct such things, wouldn't there? And so, another click of his tongue sounding, he found his former heir and his gaggle of friends in an entertainment room, and— Oh? Why, if it isn't young Midoriya Izuku, and if I remember correctly, you're Shinsokum and our groom's son, yes? He greeted warmly as the children rounded a corner to meet his corridor, each of them holding an ice bucket brimming with foes and clumps. Do you remember me by any chance, Midoriya could? Watching as the child blinked at him, he felt his own smile spread widely as the boy gasped and tottered over to him brightly. Oh my gosh! You're the quirk specialist I met at the cafe! Oh no! I'm sorry, sir, I'm great with faces, but not so much with names. He chirped, his cheeks blushing a little. I feel kind of awful since you remembered mine. Ah, oh, my boy, that's what old age gets you. He chuckled as the other children shared a glance, shrugged, and ambled over. And besides, you're an incredibly affable young man. And to see a child already so dedicated to quirk analysis makes this whole part of mine quite glad. He furthered pleasantly, the boy positively beaming at the praise. It wasn't hard to see why Shoda and his community adored him so much, wasn't it? Now, would you boys be so kind as to tell me where I might find the happy couple, please? Oh, I think Shoni was thanking Toshiji to see the cakes. We can take you to the kitchen if you like, Izuku informed energetically. But what about your eyes, my dears? Surely you were taking it somewhere, he asked congenially. Ah, uh, these are just what Fuyumi need, not Sony, and Shoto could made. No, since the internet went down, we had a competition to see who could make an actual cube. Turns out it was harder than they thought, the blind child reported through a giggle that was shared with the others. We were just taking the, uh, first attempts to the big garden through the side gig so they could melt on the soil. It'd be a shame to waste them down the drain, right? The young boy, who their dear cat fan had saved from the hells of social services, followed on with a grin. What intelligent, thoughtful, forward-thinking lad you are! It's no wonder that Shodakun speaks of you all so highly! He complimented after the children, their expressions pleased, placed their buckets to one side. Oh, thank you! Um, Shigaraki-san, my boys! He introduced with a bow. I'll lead on, if you will. Chatting with the children, dear Shoni, thought of so fondly as they walked down two more corridors, was even better in person. We had lots of fun making the cord they used for their hand-festing ceremony today. Domini helped us to make most of the cat and rabbit germs, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, and then Spinnerny and Tomoni 3D printed them, isn't that cool? Yeah, and I'm sure Papa will give us all a cupcake when we show up, too, won't he? And as they reached the kitchen, he was more than pleased to know that he had three little stewards of goodwill to help keep things civil, to keep things calm. And so, ah, uh, please do excuse us, we're looking for the happy couple, he offered to the chef who came to the doors when he knocked. We believe there is cake to be shared, he furthered, and the otter-featured man who greeted them needed no further explanation while sitting and allowing them inside. How fortunate, how wonderful. And so not even an hour since he left Tartarus, here he was walking through a bustling kitchen to a smaller room where... Hi, Shoni! Ooh, is that one of the cupcakes? May we have one, please? Ah, uh, and can Shigaraki-san have one, too? Watching as the man who'd been on his way out of the lesser kitchen stopped, his eyes widening in shock before they shrank into horrified pinpricks. All for one smile that the young man who'd inadvertently become his muse the chuckle rippling out of him, more of a rumbling purr than anything else. Yo, 
Why, Shodokun, you didn't think I'd miss your wedding day, did you? He asked, his tone the epitome of friendly, whilst he placed hands on the heads of Izumgu and Nato. Surprise! He added, the three boys laughing along with him as they followed his backtrack. Ah, the poor thing was doing a very good job of not looking rattled, wasn't he? I see. The eatery owner breathed after a swallow. Have you been here long? Oh, no, I just arrived now, as it happens. He all but purred, and then I happened upon three wonderfully thoughtful escorts who mentioned something about cupcakes. Is that not so? He added, the boys all oblivious to the tension between them, cheering whilst he appraised the smaller chamber they'd reassured the newly married man into. Hmm, is dear Toshinori not with you? He murmured as the man who'd thwarted him only to keep him company for nearly three years backed warily toward the large refrigerator, those cautious hands beckoning the children to his side, I'd hoped to pass my congratulations on to him as well. He smirked. It's just outside. The raven-haired youth returned his shock, dying under his need to protect the younger people now fawning over the selection of sweet treats on display. Because of you, no doubt. Ha! <laughs> no doubt indeed. He tittered merrily, his head inclining towards the goods. But it wouldn't be too rude of us to enjoy a cake whilst we wait for him to join us now would it 